Hi everybody, it's Amy at Crafty Cat and I'm here to show you Fern's um, Spill and Tea journal. And it is a one signature journal in a manila file folder. Um, it measures six by nine and it's been tied with a sorry silk closure. I added lace on the um, spine. I like to cover up my signature strings. A lot of people like to see them. I like to cover them. It's just a personal preference. It doesn't have to have this <clears throat> at all. It's just something that I like to do. So um, it's got the sari silk, like I said, and I did add a picture of some ladies at tea here. Other than that, it's um, it hasn't changed a whole lot on the cover. The lace in this is all I've added, and I did add a little bit of the mica powder to the picture as well. I don't know if you can see the sparkle, but it's definitely there. Um, the flap opens like this. I have signed it right here. <clears throat> Then you open it up, and there's a large journaling card here. Some little kiddos having tea. <clears throat> I need to stitch around that. I just realized I'm going to set it over here. I keep doing that lately. It's like i got to have one card that isn't stitched. All right, and then this is my Spill and Tea Digi. And this has all been, the whole cover has been um, collaged with just all different papers and my Spill and Tea papers. And this is... Um, from Joe Beth Sexton. Hold on just a second. Sorry about that. I apologize. It was somebody who hung up on me. So nice. <laughs> I'm glad I stopped my video for that. I just thought it might be one of my kids. Um, anyways, so this is my spilling tea. This is Allie the Cockney Crafters uh, faux fabric. Love that. This is my spilling tea again. <clears throat> and then we get to here, and I have my belly band with the envelope. It's a glassine envelope that we decoupaged with um, the mica powder and some tea bags and avocado, <coughs> avocado dye doily. Excuse me. My throat's all ugh. And then um, I did decoupage a little lace here, pink lace, and there's a little applique and some lace and some cheesecloth. And then inside is a piece of avocado dyed lined paper with a little teapot stamped there, just for a nice journaling area. I really enjoyed making this journal. I enjoy making pretty much all of them. It's just some kind of um, hitch a little more than others, I guess. I noticed there's a little string right there. And then in the belly band, we have one of Carry the Crafters little tags, and it's backed with avocado dyed graph paper. And it just slips in the little pocket there. <clears throat> this is um, Digital Curio's lace, and then this is just some scrapbook paper. This is a doily, one of those big square doilies. Some avocado dyed paper, and then the little teapot guy that you guys saw me use. This was a pattern in an embroidery uh, magazine that I was gifted, and uh, it was just in there. And it's just really cute. And I didn't know, but Fern collects teapots. So now I know that. And she's got another little teapot. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then here's a guest check. A little journaling spot. And then this is Allie the Cockney Crafters um, Mocha Chai. And then here's some, just a little bit of lace there. And my Spill and Tea. And this is from my Spill and Tea. This is Shabby Dabby Doodah Flower. Um, these cards are in my um, price tag <laughs> digital. <laughs> oh my gosh, remembering all of it. Okay, and then this is in my Spill and Tea, this large journaling card. I added this from Tracy Fox. It's a tea card. And then just a little cutout from my Spill and Tea Digi, some fabric, and an image of some ladies. <clears throat> okay, and then this is some... Um, Vintage um, Ledger and Spill and Tea, and this is from Spill and Tea as well. And then this um, was out of a like a Family Circle magazine, and it was just funny because it's Canterbury tea bags, and on the top it says Men's Tea or something like I don't know. I just thought it was it was cute, and it did get ripped, but it was just so fun that I had to put it in there. <clears throat> and then uh, this is a little tag that we made together, I think, or maybe I made by myself. I don't know. But you can journal on the back. I have pinned it to this lace pocket because these lace pockets, as with many lace pockets, if you don't put a bottom on them, they're just kind of loose, you know. So it's not going to hold 
you, you know, if you put another thicker paper behind there, it would probably hold it better, but I just pinned it from the lace um, on the top of the tag to the lace on the pocket, and that keeps it there. This is my spill and tea. This is a pocket that we did together using some of those little envelopes all hooked together, and Gail Agustinelli does this quite often with these little envelopes. And then this is cut out of my spill and tea, another little stamped fabric tea thing. There's a couple of uh, journaling cards in here. These are from Artie Mays, and I just stitched around them, and they just tuck right in the little envelopes. And then in the pocket is a large tag from my Spill and Tea Digi, and this um, is from uh, my price tag. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with that today. They look a little bit different in the price tag Digi because this is one that I stamped, and I couldn't use this stamp because of copyright, so anyways. There's that, but the ones in the price tag digi are very similar to that. And then this was a embroidery magazine that had this uh, tea set. I thought that was kind of cute. And on this side, I added some of Gail Agustinelli's um, coffee dyed brown paper. And then I added some of my spill and tea images on some vellum or transparency paper. What? whichever you like to call it, and then I stitched spill and tea down here, and it's all kind of jaggedy and weird. And then here's a large tag, and this one's in my spill and tea digi, and then I added uh, part of one of the cards that are in the price tag digi. This is from Shabby Dabby Doo Dah. This is uh, Carrie the Crafter's tag. This is from Lorna at uh, Taylor Made Journals. This one down here, I believe, is Shabby Dabby Doo Dah again, and this is Tracy Fox tea cards. Okay, faux tea cards, I think she calls it. And then this goes in here, if it doesn't get caught. <laughs> right, and then that's my Spill and Tea Digi. This is Allie the Cockney Crafters Mocha Chai. I just, I love that Digi of hers because she's got great images on her tea dye coffee dye, whichever it is, and then a ledger, and then a doily, and this is my spill and tea, spill and tea here, and an another part of that uh, family circle, I think it is, with these funny little teacups, or coffee cups, I don't know, but the Oscar Mayer wasn't really intended for this, but <laughs> it was on the back of that magazine page. Uh, this is the Digital Curio Lace again. This is Taylor Made Journal's uh, wallpaper. Uh, this is my Spill and Tea and Digital Curio. And on the back of, oopsie, we have, oh yeah, that's right. On the back of this Digital Curio, there's um, a little journaling card in a pocket, like a corner pocket down here that's also a tuck for the tag. And then this is the tag that we did the other day with my price tag digi, these two pieces, and then this one I just found online. This is my um, spill and tea digi, so that goes in there. And then another image from it's the other side of the tea, what is it? Oh, tender leaf tea bags is what that one is. Spill and tea. And this is a doily and vintage ledger. And then Ali, the Cockney Crafters Mocha Chai, some lace ruffle there, or pleat, whatever you want to call it. Um, spill and Tea Digi. Uh, this is out of an embroidery magazine, the other side of the one with the tea set. On this side I added a little doily, and these I got from In Love Art Shop. So um, if you're looking for something like that, they have these nice little flat uh, doilies that you can write on. And then this is also from there, the washi stickers. This is avocado dye with some lace and my spill and tea ladies in a teacup. And this is another one of the lace pockets that I have pinned a tag to. And so you can flip them over and still write on them like that. You don't even have to unpin them unless you want to, but they're they're just on a bolt pin so they're easily undone. Um, more old magazine there. And then this is my spill and tea, spill and tea. Um, these ladies I found on Pinterest. This is Shabby Dabby Doo Dah, Shabby Dabby Doo Dah. This is my card from Spill and Tea there. Um, Gail Agustinelli's brown tea dye, coffee dye. And then that's part of one of the pockets for my price tag. 
Fidgy, and this is from Shabby Dabby Doo -da. These are from Tracy Fox. <laughs> I really can't hardly make a journal without like mixing a lot of uh, different artists. I don't know, it's just sort of the way I am. Uh, Spill and Tea, and this is Allie the Cockney Crafters Mocha Chai, Avocado Dye Lace, uh, Doily there, another Doily to write on. Lace from Digital Curio. This is from Lorna at Taylor Made Journals. And this is Spilling Tea. And this is another tag. I think we made that one together. That's my tag. This image is in my Spilling Tea, a little lace uh, price tag. And um, more little cutout from the Spilling Tea. And I just cut those out of the paper itself. And this is Spilling Tea. And this little girl, I found an image of her online. It says, wonderful there. And those are from Shabby Dabby Doo Dah. This bag has the mica powder on it, so it's a little shiny. And spill and tea there. And then this little booklet is the first thing that we made together for this journal. And um, it has the lady here on the front. That's from Pinterest. And then this is Gail Augustinelli, <clears throat> Mrs. Coggs. I think that one's Rachel at Roxy Creations, and that is uh, Tina, Shabby Dabby Dito. And this is from Lorna at Taylor Made Journals. It's her European uh, letters, I think it's called, uh, with just the envelopes. It's, it's either called envelopes or letters. It's probably envelopes, European envelopes. And then this is a little lace from my um, spill and tea. And it opens like this. There's a tag in here. And this is from my Spill and Tea. This is uh, Tina Shabby Dabby Doo Dah. Uh, Spot of Tea stamped on fabric and an image of ladies. And it's backed with the Spill and Tea Digi. This is scrapbook paper. Uh, just, you know, a little collage there. There's a card that goes in that top one. And this is, as you can see, Tim Holtz and scrapbook paper and typing paper and Shabby Dabby Doo Dah. <laughs> and the back is Spill and Tea there. And that just slides in there. And this was the um, sewing pattern, uh, the instructions. And then there's another pocket up here. And that has a journaling card with a lady having tea and the washi stickers, scrapbook paper. This is um, uh, like an old paper. And I can't remember if it's in Swedish or what, but... Um, yeah, it's not English. <laughs> and ledger paper, the tea, spilling tea there. And a journaling spot with a spilling tea there. And that's Tina, Shabby Dabby Doo Dah, and spilling tea and scrapbook paper. And then there's another pocket over here with the two little girls having tea. And that is in my spilling tea, Digi. And this is a Shabby Dabby Doo Dah. I really squished that one up. It looks cool. And some doily and a washi sticker and a place to journal on the uh, ledger. Not just text in there and then there is another little place to write there so that closes up and that is her and I really enjoyed this fern it was loads of fun so thank you so much for um, ordering one of my journals I really appreciate it so I have a project that we'll do now. Let me just set this to the side, and that will be um, in my Etsy shop this afternoon. Fun, so you can find her there. All right. So I did yesterday. I was kind of playing around. I should move this a little bit. It seems kind of wacky. The glue here, and I took. Um, that transparency that Theron wanted to do with just all the numbers, like the price numbers all over it, and I printed it out on deli paper, and I did this by, um, I just use a piece of copy paper, I put a tiny bit of glue at the top, and you can kind of see because that's why it got ripped, because when I pulled it off, it pulled a little of the deli paper with it. But, um, you know, get it stuck down good, and then I put it through my printer, to get that transparency and nothing else comes with it because it's just the numbers. So I made just a little bag and then um, I collaged with just some um, um, 
graph paper, not graph paper, ledger paper, oh my goodness. And Tim Holtz, this is from Artie Mays, and this is from Shabby Dabby Doodah. And then I also did a tag, and I used uh, Carrie the Crafters, one of his tags like this, and I just cut the bottom off so that it was just a shorter squat, you know, little tag, because I just liked how it had the music and stuff in the background. And I added one of my price tag images, and this is from Artie Mays, Tim Holtz. And then I, you know, everybody um, twists those little, or twists uh, paper clips with the little loop. And so I did one of Tim Holtz little bitty ones. And I added one of my price tags and I put some ledger paper on the back of it. And just a uh, rusty jump ring there. I finally rested some stuff thanks to Allie, the Cockney Crafter. She did a video on um, how to rest stuff. I, I've been thinking about it forever and I've seen, you know, other people do it and then you just don't really pay attention to how they did it and whatever. <laughs> and I've just never done it, so I finally did it and I got some rusty bits, so that was kind of fun. So yeah, I thought that was a fun little thing, so I thought we could make one together so you guys can see exactly how I did it. I think I'm going to use the rest of this and I'll just use the bottom portion. You can see when it runs through my printer, a lot of times it's not great. <laughs> you know, because it kind of um, can get messed up a little bit. Printers, for the most part, don't love this kind of paper, I've decided. I mean, like, they'll kind of do it, but it's not their favorite. So sometimes you just got to kind of play with it and accept the fact that you might have smudges. And the, uh, the second one here, I think I might have taken this one out of the printer too fast. And that's how I smudged the nine and stuff. But this one was like that because I let it set on the printer for a while and make sure that it, the ink had set. But just doesn't like it. Just like the cutter doesn't like it. Nothing likes this paper <laughs> except us. <laughs> Drives me batty sometimes because it's like I just work. I just want you to work. <sighs> okay, I'm going to fold this in because I kind of want to see if I can get a few of these little number. Oh, no. Not gonna happen. So then I'm just gonna fold all the way to over there. That I might be able to get some of the uh, dollars and cents, so to speak. Okay. But I do like just the numbers too. So I'm just gonna come to where it kind of meets again. Bring it a little further. And try to make it straight, which, good luck. So let's see, I think I'll just cut it with scissors. And it doesn't really matter, it's going to be the back and I'll probably stick it down somewhere. So, so that's just going to have numbers. But I think it's kind of fun. I thought that was a good idea of Theron's to, because we were just using it to, you know, make the tags and tickets and he's like hey mom we could make this a transparency and put it in I mean the cool part is is you can print it on paper and then you can use it for the blank tags too if you want to you know you could just cut kind of tear out the numbers or something and put them on there if you were wanting specific <coughs> specific numbers easy for me to say okay so I just folded up the bottom there like you saw and I'm sure you've seen this but if you're new you might not and then I just cut that back part out because we don't need that extra bulk. It's not that you have to cut it off. It's just it just adds a lot of bulk. So then I'm just going to kind of do a slanted cut here to make that kind of cut. And it doesn't have to be super precise because, like I said, that'll be the back. And no one will see it. This wants to fold weird for some reason thing with that kind of paper. It's a little a little weird. And so I really try to get fairly close to the edge. That's why I like to use the, oh my word, we're going to have glue struggles. The art glitter glue because it's got the fine point. It's going to come out. Yay. And then let's see how far. I mean, you don't want gobs of glue because this paper is a little bit weird, but I do like to try to get to the edges so that it's not getting caught on any tags or anything that you put in and out. So 
So I hope you guys are having a good day. I didn't even say that. See, I get like in the zone, you know, I get, I want to say all the things that I need to say. <laughs> I just, I stink at that. I apologize. I just have to get all my stuff out. <laughs> See, I said I'm not going to glue on here and then I glue on here and mess it up. All right. So I like that. I was going to cut across there with the pinking shears, but... I like seeing all those numbers. Wow, I did not do a very good job of making that even well. It'll just seem like it's real because the real ones aren't very even either. All right, so what else could we put up on there? Probably want to ink it a bit. So let's do that. I think I will at least do a little punch. So what I'm gonna have to do is put another piece of paper with this because I know for a fact that my punch will not punch that. So I'm going to tear this book page. And we're just going to put it in here. And I'm going to try to get this in here. This ought to be interesting. little bit tiny. Okay, now if we can figure out what's the middle, and I'm going to assume it's about right there, which looks about right with the numbers. All right, so that just makes it so that the um, punch, especially these, doesn't tear, just tear your Paper. It doesn't like that thin paper, kind of like the cutter, you know, the cutter just kind of tears through it too. It just doesn't like it for whatever reason. I just realized that this isn't very even right here. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but... And I know I'm wrinkling it and stuff, but I'm not worried about it. It's fine. Inky. Okay. What else could we use on that? Let's see if we've got some scraps. <laughs> Boy, do we have scraps. And then some. This would be kind of cool on there. You know what? Did I put my tear roller? don't know, so I'm just going to use this one. It's probably right in front of my nose. I don't see it though. Oh, there it is. It was just semi-buried instead of completely buried. I'm just take that piece off. I just need a piece. I don't need a lot. So Allie, the Cockney Crafter, nominated me for the challenge. Um, I can't remember what she called it because I'm, I'm horrible at this kind of stuff, but it's kind of like International Women's Day or something. I'm sorry, I'm just not good at that. But anyway, I thank her so much because it's like women do you admire and things like that. And so I um, nominated... Tina at Shabby Dabby Doo Dot. I don't know if she'll see it or not. I should probably try to get a hold of her. But, um, because I really admire her for her perseverance and, and her strength. Because um, about a year ago or so, there were just some people not being very nice to her on her um, YouTube channel. And I don't know if any of you know any of that. But anyway, um, that was smudged a little bit because I rubbed it with the ink, so I decided to move it over there. <laughs> um, so anyway, I nominated her because she just stuck with it, and she just like pulled up her bootstraps and kept going, and she has done so well, like very successful. So I just admire her for that. It was 
because people were not being very nice. And she just really just kept at it. She just did very well. And I just really admire that because that can be hard. It can be really hard to put yourself out there and then have people just, you know, just plain not be nice. So, um, yeah, I just thought that was awesome. So. just wanted to make sure I mention that in case she sees this video. I, I know she does comment every so often and I try to do the same for her. I just don't always get a chance to watch everything that I'd like to. But um, I really do like her a lot. She's a very nice lady. And lady would be the key word I would say for sure. So. So yeah, that was very nice of Allie. She's another amazing lady. If she had not been uh, nominated, I definitely would have nominated her. Uh, another one that just really perseveres, you know. And I just think it's awesome. Incredible ladies. So, But anyway, my picture's on Instagram over there. It may be the only time you ever see it. So <laughs> I'll try to remember to link it. Um, in the description box today. <laughs> I'm not much of a picture person. When Ellie sent that, I was like, oh, seriously? <laughs> I mean, I love her, and it was so amazing for her to do that, but I do not love pictures, I will just say. That is not my favorite thing. I mean, I love pictures of my kids and all that, but... All right, so we're gonna put a little bit of glue back here just to make sure that stays there. And that was just, it's kind of like um, burlap, uh, like a really fine burlap, and I don't even know where I got that. I think somebody sent it with something in Happy Meal, so thank you so much if that was you. <laughs> I just have no brain left in my head, so. Um, I love any time I can use these, um, Tim Holtz pictures, and I think this kind of stuff is just really, works really well to do that. Oh, I like her. Her dress and her ribbon match. Like her dress has the green and then the red. I like that. And she's smiling. That's awesome. So I'm going to use that one. So yeah, but, and I sorry, I'm sorry that I'm not better about all that. But definitely support all the strong ladies in our crafting community they are amazing and Gail is another one and I thought about um, nominating her but the problem is I'm sure she'll get nominated like a whole bunch so I was like you know I wanted other people to also get nominated because Gail is amazing as we've talked about before but yeah so like to rough them up a little bit so they're not so plain and then a lot of times I'll uh, fold over the corner a little and like dog ear it you know and then ink it But that was very nice of Allie to do that. I really appreciate her. She's just an amazing, amazing friend. So yeah, you could. these would be kind of, a, speaking of Tina, these would be a great mask making sort of a thing because you could just make up a bunch of them and pop them into journals. This is for my spill and tea. Thought it would work well, so I'm gonna have to cut off a good portion of that. Um, I just kind of like the top part, you know, right where the little corner starts to be the top of the tag. I think I cut that other one even a little bit shorter. 
Yeah, just a little bit, but not too much. So. Now I mean cutting a straight line is, I think I did too bad, let's hope. This one's a little bigger than the other one, but see, that's the thing. You could make them any size because you're using, oh, I did cut it crooked. <laughs> because you can make them any size because you're just using whatever size piece of paper that you you know want so let's see if that <laughs> looks a little bit straighter uh, a little bit I think my bag's a little crooked too so everything's just crooked all right ink it up a little so this would be a fun Maths making thing. Oh, we need to put something on the back. Mm. Do I have any scraps I could put on the back? That is that painter's masking paper in green, and I just like to wrinkle it all up. But you can leave it smooth if you like it smooth. It's going to smooth it out a little bit here when I put it on the tag anyway. But the fun part about it, even though it smooths out some of the wrinkles, is that um, you still get that texture, and if you ink it a little bit, it looks nice. Just want to make sure you get all the edges down good. I guess that's probably not the absolute best um, writing surface in the world, but <laughs> it looks really cool. I guess you could add in it, like write a little something on a different piece of paper or whatever, and then just uh, glue it onto the back. I didn't think that through very well, did I? But it looks cool. And sometimes that's what I'm going for, is it looks cool. Okay, so let's see what else do we want on there. Use one of these little funny uh, ads from my price tag. Did you? I love these people in this car right here. I think they're adorable. All right. Mm, I don't know. Let me see what else I got first before I tear things apart. I think I know. I want one of these if I have it still. And I'll know it when I see it. It has a Tim Holtz paper dolls, obviously. I just like to say, in case people don't know, because, you know, not everybody has been doing this jazz forever. One of these guys. I like these two boys. Yeah, I think that one works better. I mean, here's this one bigger, but it's too big. Yeah, he just works better for the tag without his arm out all the way. I love his striped socks. It's the bomb. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to set these over here because that'll take me another 20 minutes just to get it in the bag again. I really need to get some of those um, ephemera folders. I keep thinking I'll make them. <laughs> That's a funny joke. I don't know when I think I have time to do that. 
I'm going to start work on a couple of journals um, for an order that are for Thanksgiving and Christmas. So that's going to be that's going to be loads of fun, and it'll be take me a minute to get my head in the game, which is why I didn't start that today because I just felt like. Okay, I don't know yet how I want to do <laughs> what I want to use. I need to print stuff out because, you know, I have kind of all my other sorts of stuff out. But I need to get started on Christmas. I have some ideas for some, um, you know, more hinge journals like I did last year. But I think I'm going to put them in like canvas bags. I think that would be fun this time. So I ordered some little canvas bags. So yeah, I've got stuff I've been thinking about doing anyway for all that, but I just haven't got there yet. Yeah, I was I was gonna start right after Christmas, start making hinge journals for my shop, and you know so that I'd have them, have a bunch of them. And I love what Dee Dee's doing. Dee Dee, I have watched her video. I just didn't get a chance to comment because a lot of times I watch them late at night and um, I don't see the text really great so typing to somebody <laughs> I'm sure I've typed all kinds of crazy things but anyway um, I didn't get a chance to comment and then I forgot but I did watch it about your um, challenge you're starting on Monday and I think that's a great idea she's gonna like have uh, like the first day you'll make pockets and so you'll do like try to do three in 15 minutes or something but it's just the um I don't know if I want a piece of this I do but um I think what the premise is is that you don't have to decorate them up all the way and stuff it's more just the base of it is my understanding and I could be totally wrong so correct me Dee Dee because like I said I half sleep but um yeah I love the idea of you know, making things up so you have them ready for your Christmas journals because that is super smart. So anyway, love the idea. And I may be joining in on that if you don't mind because I think that's fun. Dee Dee's awesome. If you guys haven't checked her out, it's Dee Dee Farago on YouTube and I'll try to remember to link her. And if I forget, just remind me because I'm a ding dong. So it's hard to remember all the stuff you know like I like to remember all the shops that I put in a journal and all that so just kick me in the rear if I don't because then I'll put it in or try to do it the next time or whatever me brain is what I tell my kids all the time because they know me I'm a I'm just a dingy mess It just kills me because I used to be super like, um, you know, I never had to write anything down all the way through college and everything. I could always remember when stuff was due and just everything. Now it's like, <laughs> what I do yesterday? I have no idea. <laughs> uh, if I get any dippier, I don't know. I don't know if it's just there's so much to remember or what, but it's bad. Whatever it is, it's bad. Okay, so now the trick is I want to get this at the right height for this little guy to stand down here and put his arm on the edge of what looks like, you know, like he's resting his arm there. Something, I guess, roughly like that. Okay. But, um, yeah, so that these ideas that's a great idea and I need to get going on stuff because I know I'll be kicking myself down the road if I don't it's just really hard for me to think about Christmas at this time of the year because <sighs> it's overwhelming at the right time of the year it's one of those overload things I get a little overloaded Oh, 
awesome. Okay, and then I'm going to take a paper clip. I don't know if I want to use one of the itty bitty ones again. I might use one of my rusty ones if I can figure out what I did with them. Oh my goodness, Amy. See, I just had those and I already don't know what I did with them. It's probably because, you know, I have stuff everywhere. Yes, Gail, I did not clean my room yet. Gail told me to clean my room. <laughs> what did I do with those? I just had them before I started this video. Oh, there they are. Oh, my goodness. I knew I'm like, I put them in a baggie and set them on my desk so I would have them. They're just all the way at the other end. So I think I'll use a rusty paper clip instead of the tiny one, but you can do this with the tiny one. So I was impressed because I didn't think I'd be able to do it with that. It was so itty bitty. But anyway, if you haven't done this, if you're new, um, this is a paper clip and I got how to rust this from Allie the Cockney Crafter and I'll link her video so you can watch that. But um, you just grab that and this is not my idea either. This is somebody else's idea. And I'm not even sure where it started, but, and you just basically want to come all the way back around, but not totally tweak out your paper clip. So it's got, you know, a little loop on it. I kind of messed up the whole thing. Mine are not perfect. Some people make them look just amazing, but. I am what I am, you know, <laughs> and it wouldn't be perfect, so, all right, so I have a little jump ring here, and these were just um, BB Craft jump, jump rings that I rested, and I'm going to put that through the little tiny hole, you see, okay, through the hole there, the jump ring, okay, and then we're going to use one of our little funny price tags. And I will probably back it. I want one of these up here. That'd be kind of fun. With something. So let me put this one on real quick. The time periods don't go together here because this lady I think she's probably 50s 60s era and this is like the 1800s but you know whatever <laughs> you can make a match better if you like it that way <laughs> I just got stuff I liked uh, slapped it down okay and this one has an itty bitty hole in it so I need these these are from Stampin' Up a um, hundred years ago so but it's, I don't even know what size this is. It's so tiny, this punch. But you could do the same thing with a pokey tool. So that wouldn't be hard at all. Oh, you know, I need to back it before I, and I'm just gonna back it with some of this uh, fun paper because you're not gonna write on the back of that anyway. It's so tiny. I mean, I guess you could, but that'd be work. I'm amazed, my son. Oh no, he's not done yet. I was like, I'm surprised I haven't heard from him in the form of a phone call or something that they're going to go do something because he's at um, percussion camp and every day they've, like he brought a bunch home yesterday and they went swimming and then <laughs> and they went to Kentucky Fried Chicken and he's just having a blast driving. It makes me a little angst, but um, yeah, he's having a good time. I mean, he he's got a good head on his shoulders. I'll say that and then he'll do something stupid, right? But, and he's not going far. He's just going really close to where we are. Not that that matters, but Tina at Shabby Dabby Do what Da was, has been talking about her son driving and how it makes, makes her a little uh, like, yes, I know exactly what you mean. And my daughter just did it two years. It wasn't even two years ago that she started because she started driving a little bit later. But, uh, yeah, it does make you completely angst sometimes. I mean, you want them to go 
do stuff, but you know. it's, it can be stressful, as I'm sure many, 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 many of you know. Uh, do I want that way? Okay, so let's see here. You're wanting to flip that way, so let's do it this way. Put the ticket on this side. You just got to play with it because it wants to flip around like that. Okay, so then it does have to stay on this side. It flipped itself over, so see that little then when you put it in here, this little 45 cents can hang over the bag. So that is that. I hope that was fun for you guys. So we have the other little guy. So if you got my little digi, or you know, you could hang loads of other little things. You could hang beads off of there. You could, you know, do whatever style you want. It's not like you have to have that. You don't. You can, um, you know, print anything on deli paper that you like because you could go for a totally different style and then do something like that. But I think those are super fun. So, yeah, I hope you guys have an awesome evening and um, we'll see you again tomorrow. Talk later. Bye bye now.